So, because we're piping sound through grid fam. And that's okay. why. All right, it says we're live. That's okay. that's the claim here. Uh, so I'm going to ask the uh, the audience. Hey, folks, can you guys hear us? Question mark. Because we're streaming with a program called GridFam, and I'm your host, Smurf Chase, and uh, would like to know uh, if you guys can actually hear us, please, or where we're at. Because this is crazy, and I enjoy my blue filter very much. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, we got 30 it's people. Not a, it's not a bug, it's a feature. All right. Yeah, I'm in a hookah bar. I'm a Smurf in a hookah bar. Great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> gosh, dang it. <laughs> my <laughs> real guns in the background laughing. Oh, my gosh. All right, we can hear. All right, cool. Well, we've had a lot of technical difficulties, as is usual for our show, but welcome to the uh, C.S. Joseph podcast. I'm your host, Smurf Chase, with Mr. Jason Hooper, a fantastic uh, ISTP uh, friend of mine who... I, in many ways, have looked up to uh, throughout the years with his knowledge on health, uh, fitness, uh, survival, those kinds of things. And I really do see him as a mentor in that area. And I, I'm often asking him questions and whatnot. He also uh, assisted a mutual friend of ours, uh, John Brisson, uh, when it comes to giving me uh, certain uh, tips and whatnot and how to get me from like not dying of liver disease, et cetera, which by the way, I'm now 13 days officially off my meds and I'm very thankful for that and uh, uh, looking forward to having more health freedom. Uh, but it was important to me to introduce Mr. Hooper uh, to folks, uh, been talking to him for a few years, known him for years, and I really see him an expert in the various fields that he's inclined to be interested in. And uh, based on that, uh, we've been talking very heavily this week in the uh, Facebook public group about the mature masculine and the mature feminine, or the content that I present in the season 13, uh, et cetera, uh, the, uh, the playlist uh, on his YouTube channel. If you guys haven't watched season 13, what the hell are you doing? please do it. Uh, but yeah, the thing is, is that oftentimes we are having problems with uh, not knowing how to take care of ourselves. And that's happened because, well, fatherlessness and no fathers being around to teach their children, but also because of the advent of Edward Bernays brainwashing the masses into believing that processed food is a good thing, as well as, you know, Kellogg's Corn Flakes and, uh, you know, we obviously need to be eating graham crackers so we can stop masturbating because that's what they were actually originally created to do and that's actually history and you can look that up. But the point is there's a lot of marketing out there and a lot of brainwashing when it comes to uh, health and uh, Mr. Hooper here is to help us cut through the bullshit. So thank you very much, uh, Jason, for being on tonight and uh, I'm very excited uh, to hear what you have prepared for us. Dude, Chase, what an intro, man. I don't know <laughs> sure. if I can live up to that. <laughs> I'm sure but, you can. Uh, I'm very grateful to, you know, just to get to talk to you, man. You're one of my favorite people in this whole world. And I see you as a mentor, too. And I, I really appreciate the work that you're doing. And I'm hoping what we can accomplish today in this live stream is I'm, I'm hoping that you can kind of break down what I'm saying in a way that makes it relatable to other people and cuts at their values. Because I think I, I can talk all the science and, and I can talk all the fitness, whatever, all, until I'm blue in the face, but. In, well, until, I'm, I'm the blue one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, you know, but until it's packaged in a way that really resonates with people, you know, it's just spitting in the wind. So, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about this and, and hopefully you're, audience is willing to put up with an ISTP like me and hopefully I'm not too much of a pain in the butt, but uh, you know how I am. I'm going to tell it like it is and people That's can be with want, me man. or they can click out. You That's know? right. And, and some people, some people are going to click out. Maybe it's not for them, whatever. It's not their time, but hopefully you can help me with that and, and keep them engaged. Uh, and so, yeah, so great. You know, we, we were talking before the show and we we're talking a little bit about about politics or rather our, our lack of interest in politics. And, you know, I think we have that in common and it's like, I think at, at a certain point in our lives and we mature, we just reach a certain stage where we're like, politicians are, are not gonna save us from anything. Like politicians no. are not going to make our lives better in any way. Um, but we have the potential 
to make life better for ourselves and for other people. And that's really what I like about you is that, um, like myself, you're also a teacher and you're teaching everybody about the union archetypes and, you know, and it's really helping a lot of people. And I think that's the way to change the world. You can't wait for somebody else to do it. You got to get out there and do it yourself. And again, yeah. that's one of the things I hope to accomplish today is to get people to treat their bodies better, you know, get people to grow up, stop being Peter Pan, you know, <laughs> get out there, be a mature male, female, whatever, develop your body. Okay. Um, so well, part about having yeah. self-respect i mean like i'll be honest like i used to weigh like 300 pounds when i was 14 years old and i i my my biggest thing is is that i understood the need the need to develop myself and change my body the problem is is that my execution was horrible to the point where i was never getting any results i i mean and here's what my routine was i did 40 minutes a day on a on a machine called a gazelle i jogged for 1.5 miles every other day i did this you know really bs routine on this like you know multi-gym setup was basically like a cheap version of a bowflex and i had no idea what i was doing and i was just hoping for the best and I tried to ride that wave of puberty down. And then all I did really diet wise is I just cut out all sugar and did Atkins because that's all anyone knew what to do in, you know, the early 2000s and the late 90s, et cetera. And I like I went to high school in 2001. So I was 300 pounds in the year 2000, 2001, et cetera. And somehow, some way, by some miracle, I made it to 185 by the time I was a senior in high school. But still, it was it was horrible. And uh it's been up and down ever since. I got up to like 240 pounds at one point in time a couple of years back when I was like 26 and then on the way back down and then I had my liver problem. But the problem for me is the how. I, I've always known the why, but I've never known the how. But then there's people in this audience who have that same problem. But then it seems like everyone out there, half the people out there is like, oh, I know how to do it. I just don't know why I should do it. Or the other half of people mm. are like, I know why I should do it. I don't know how to do it. And that's where I was. I was in that category, you know, so... Those, those SE users versus those SI users, right? <laughs> There's their execution. <laughs> well, yeah, let's let's build on that idea. And if you don't mind, I'm going to try a thought experiment. And Go for it. And I'll play this game if you want to. So I'm just down. everybody, just bear with me. It's kind of a, a hippie, uh, crunchy little thing to do. But, you know, if you don't mind, just just I want just everybody to close their eyes. Just do unless you're driving. Please don't close your eyes if you're driving. Um, <laughs> like you said, close my eyes. I want to do the thought experiment, bro. I want to get jacked. <laughs> yeah, jacked. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just uh, if if it's a safe uh, time for you to do so, just kind of close your eyes. Just take a couple of breaths. Just take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Let's do another one. Once you're kind of centered, I want you to think of what it would be like to have your perfect body. Okay. Dang, You've I got the imagine. perfect body. <laughs> what, is that, what does that perfect body look like for you? For me. What does it feel like to have that perfect body? What can you do with that perfect body? Rock climbing. That's yeah. a big one for me really big one like in the, like in those rei places in, in in seattle or whatnot but that giant huge rock climbing thing being able to go from bottom to top easily yes yeah, so, i mean you got your why and hopefully other people can start to address their why's if you don't have a why you know we'll address that but let's just say for you know part of the thought experiment that i took my magic wand and poof you had your perfect body right how long do you think you could keep that perfect body for Oh gosh, uh, I I don't know. I mean, I know enough about like ma having maintenance and then just and keeping maintenance for a little bit while. But I know more about cutting than I know about maintenance, which is really sad. And I don't know very much about bulking either because I've mostly spent my t life doing cutting, uh, which is interesting, you know. But yeah, I I, I don't know. Probably maybe yeah. two months. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah if you're if you're if you're lucky two months okay if you're lucky you would go from your perfect body to complete crap health again in two months most of the people 
who are, are listening to this and we got to figure out why that is. I mean, it's kind of like people who win the lottery, right? They inherit a bunch of money uh, or they win a bunch of money and they don't know anything about money management. They didn't earn it. And so getting all that money, they usually end up going even further in debt than they were before they won the lottery. And so, cause they don't understand about tax structures or whatever. And so they, it's like, I won the lottery and now I'm bankrupt in, in the period of a year, right? Yeah, are, are people that, you know, they, join the NFL and they start making million dollars a year and stuff. Well, you know, it would be the same thing. I'm going to suggest to everybody, it would be the same thing that if uh, somehow you got the perfect body or, you know, people who get lap band surgeries and gastric bypass, like the, they understand this because like they basically get some of like the magic wand treatment where that shrinks down their stomach to the point where they can only eat like a Cheeto at a time or something. And then, you know, they throw up if they eat too much and then all of a sudden gain all the way back. And it's like, dude, you did it. You beat the, the lap band. I don't know how you did this, but you grew your stomach back and uh, it's, it's just kind of sad. So, you know, we're going to talk about how to build your lifestyle to the point where you can build your body the right way and you can keep your body that way forever. And I'm going to get real. Okay. And you know, after I say this, probably a lot of people are going to get mad and click out whatever. If this is not for you, maybe it's not your time, whatever. but, but here's the deal. Right? This is real. There's the clock ticking. Okay. And when that clock runs out, you missed your chance. Okay. You have a limited amount of time, especially to build your core strength. And if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. Let's just say for you, let's just throw out a number. Let's say for you, that number's 40. By the time you reach 40, it's going to be nearly impossible to make any meaningful strength gains to your body. All right. And you hit 40 and you, you didn't do it. You let the opportunity lap. Well, you messed up, Boomer. All right. Like you're, you're done. It's not going to happen for you. I don't care. You could take all the supplements, all the PEDs in the world, and you're not going to build your strength. So look, if you're listening to this and you've still got time left on your clock, use it wisely because once it's gone, it's gone forever. And strength is an important skill to have. So I guess that's my hook into why you should, why you should do this stuff. So um, the first thing that uh i think that we need to do is is you know is address the hierarchy and so i have um i have some infographics and stuff and if you're one of chase's subscriber or i guess if, you, if you're on chase's email list i'll make sure that you get a free copy of all of these infographics the high-res copies uh, i'm going to be drawing stuff on the whiteboard if you're not a subscriber if you're not on the list you can still see it but i mean sign up for his email it's free and you get you'll get some free stuff from me so definitely just go to cs shows of that life and, and get on the email list um forward slash anyway, the type grid or forward slash discover either one <laughs> yeah so let me get my marker so we're, we're building our hierarchy right we're building our our base and then we're going up the pyramid the bottom is the foundation it's what's important and as we go up it's less important okay so the very bottom of the pyramid that's going to be our values there we see that my mic's in the way shoot it's all, <laughs> <laughs> all right um so the values go into your core identity who you are as a person and and chase is the master of this chase is this is what makes chase the best coach i've ever had is because he can stare right into your soul and know why it is that you do what you do you don't even know it yourself but you know he, chase knows it inside and out and can word things in a way that uh makes it makes it you know, part of your identity, hey, you need to do this because this is the person you are. And you're like, oh yeah, of course. You know, it was like, I don't know, like a couple months ago, we were having this conversation and you just broke it down. You're like, hey, Jason, are, are you ready to become an entrepreneur? Like, what are you waiting for? You know, and just word it to me. It's like, oh yeah, this is my obligation to do. <laughs> like, it's immoral not to, you know, same yeah. way with fitness. Like it's, it's your moral obligation to build your body. You know, you have the potential, you should do it, you know? Uh, you know, I think about one of my favorite 
uh, Walter Lippmann quotes. Um, he, he wrote a book called The Phantom Public in 1925. And one of my favorite quotes from him is, uh, men are not good, but good for something, right? Yeah. So it's not like us that's inherently good, but it's, it's what we do because, you know, um, competence exists in function, right? So you have to perform your function out into the world in order to have competence. You're not just innately competent. Right. So that's part of the values hierarchy is understanding who you are and developing skills and putting those skills out into the world. So with fitness, we have a lot of different skills that we can work on. We can work on getting big. We can work on getting strong. We can work on having lots of endurance. We can work on getting fast. We can work on lots of these things. Our bodies are capable of doing a lot of things. But first of all, we got to know why we're doing it. And we got to know who we are. So you can answer this question. I am a person who dot, 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 who's what? I'm a person who never misses a workout. Is that part of your identity? It could be. For the most part. You know, part of my identity, part of what I tell myself all the time. I'm not a person who exercises. I train. So I make that distinction between exercising and training, meaning that I have a specific goal in mind when I go to the gym. And it's not just to get sweaty and waste my time and hog equipment that other people could be using for their benefit. I'm there <laughs> yeah, to train tell skills, me about it. right? Yeah. Um, so again, we have to first, before we do anything else, we have to assume that fitness is part of our identity and it's part of our moral obligation to build up our bodies before it's too late. If we can't solve these qu questions of the why and with our values, Everything else is going to be a waste of time, and this is one of the great. Uh, this this is one of the the great things about having a good coach like Chase is that they can get you to see that, and they can offer you incentives that you may not even know yourself to get you to do what you're supposed to do in the first place. So this is very very difficult, at least for me. I don't know Chase if there are personality types that are great at looking in their own values, but uh, I I haven't run across too many people that are that are really good at seeing how their own. Um, system you know their own value system works out and they really need somebody else to come in and show them how it, how it's working and then they're just mind blown and then their life changes so yeah I'm everybody one of those people. needs yeah yeah everybody everybody needs a coach i mean i think i i don't know but um absolutely anyway. and one of the best ways to find the best coach for yourself uh it's really to if you really want to fast track your learning find somebody who is of your same psyche or psychology and do what they've done if they're already successful and make them your mentor. But mm. if not, then you're going to have to pick a lot of pieces from a lot of different sources and put it together in one place. And even that can be challenging, if not take an entire lifetime. And I'll be honest, I've been struggling with obesity since I was six years old and I'm turning 34 in just a couple of weeks. You see what I'm saying? It's been a lifelong journey of pain and suffering and trying to figure out how to actually train properly. And I still don't even know because I've outsourced that to a trainer and she knows, but I still have no idea like the actual minutia and how, how things react. Uh, like I'm really bad at that, you know? So I'm having to rely on someone else to tell me how to do it, which she has gotten me minus 30 pounds of fat since I started being on her program, but it's still difficult. You see what I'm saying? Being yeah, able to I, figure I, out yeah. the truth is so hard so much sources out there you know for sure and you know you're talking about the minutia guess where that is on a pyramid not the bottom <laughs> like you could do all the right workout plans whatever and uh it's not gonna make a damn bit of difference if your values aren't squared up and if you don't know why yeah. you're going to the gym in the first place so yeah 100 percent. you know and one thing one takeaway that i got from you when you're talking about you know putting all the pieces together and it, it, just like i all of your the YouTube series and everything that you've done, I think you've done a great job with connecting the chain of custody with behavioral psychology and really taking a lot of different sources and putting them all together so that we don't have to, you know? Yeah, a ton um, of sources. Oh, my goodness. You know, whether, whether it comes from Jung or developing Myers and Briggs to something useful or taking even something from Tomasi, you know, and, and, and just taking what's good about that and adding it to everything else uh, and just, you know, continue to build and build and take that chain of custody of, of something that needs to be more developed, piece it together and come all the way up. I think 
you've done a beautiful job of that and and you're definitely a master of behavioral psychology because of it of going through that struggle so that you know we don't have to so I, I want to thank you for that, and you've you've definitely changed the lives of a You're lot of people. Most welcome. I uh, I I really want to uh, keep going. I, I hope I could get to that area with fitness one day because developing the warrior archetype, according to uh, uh, Moore and Gillette, is super important. And the warrior archetype of the mature masculine represents a man's ability to take care of himself, survival skills, combat skills, fitness skills. All of that, which really is the main reason is to be able to defend his home, defend his kingdom, et cetera, defend his ability to produce more than he consumed, defend his freedom. And a weak man can't do that. Literally, the warrior type is all about having strength. But with the uh, honorable attitude of, hmm. hey, I do this because I'm a man. I'm do not doing this because I'm trying to get something. I'm not doing this trying because I'm trying to get credit or I'm trying to get with women or I'm trying to, you know, it's not about that. It's about guaranteeing that he still has the crown on his head because just because you become king doesn't mean that someone can't take that crown away. You see what I'm saying? Just because you produce more than you consume doesn't mean that's going to happen tomorrow. You have to make sure that you are able to perform. And the warrior archetype exists to protect your ability as a man to be able to perform as a king. It's a performance protection thing because you can't perform unless you are taking responsibility. And that's what the warrior archetype is. And I'll be honest, like my warrior archetype, it's, it's like, it's like two out of four right now. I don't know enough about fitness. I don't know enough about these things. And this is one area of my life that I'm trying to get, you know, figured out, uh, you know, for myself personally, it's just sometimes like I have to rely on people to tell me what I should do, but then locker room talk only gets you so far. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, for me, I think the, the two most terrifying forms of the mature masculine archetype are the magician and the warrior, right? So you get somebody who really knows their stuff inside and out, really smart, really intellectual. Gosh, they could be lethal in a boardroom, right? And then you've got somebody who's physically intimidating that's in your face and you're in conflict with them and you're just staring at them eye to eye. Again, those people are lethal too. You take the two archetypes and you put them together, someone who's really smart and someone who's really strong and you're unstoppable. There's nothing that you can't do. Exactly. And imagine, and there are very few people in this world that are able to do this where they're extremely sharp and extremely powerful. But the ones that that can achieve that, they're unstoppable. They're, they're literally nothing you can do to stop them. They are going to succeed at everything that they do. So yeah, if you know, if if you're working, if you're a level two, you want to get it to level four, that that's just gonna yeah, open up so many so many doors in your life. You know, if hey, if you go from a level one to a level two, doors are gonna start flying open. You know, it, it's gonna change your life. So let's talk about technique. That's the next layer. Can you see that at all? Yeah. All right. So the next layer is technique. And what we're after we figure out why we're doing what we're doing and convincing ourselves that that's, you know, we need to we need to build our bodies. Now we gotta figure out how we're gonna do it. And there's a lot of different people out there on the interwebs that are going to tell you all sorts of different things about technique. And I'm going to teach you right now how to just cut through all of it and get to the important stuff. Okay. So we have to, first of all, figure out what our bodies are capable of doing. Okay. That's the most important thing that you have to ask yourself is not only the potential for the human body, what the potential for the human body is, but also what is your current capability as a human being okay and check your ego at the door and say like what can i actually do what phase of fitness am i currently in right now okay am i am i a novice okay am i intermediate Let's spell that right am i an advanced athlete how do you know which category you fall into? Beginner, intermediate, or advanced athlete? I have no idea. 
Well, uh, the way that you figure out is not based on your total years of training. It's not based on how many protein shakes you drink a day. It's not based on how many days a, a week you go to the gym. It's not based on how much you can squat, how much you can bench press, how much you can deadlift. It's not based on any of that stuff. What gets you from one phase of training to the next is your ability to in between the amount of load that your body can take on per workout. So a novice, a novice can train all parts of fitness simultaneously without hindrance. A novice can trade speed, endurance, strength, all of it, all at the same time and make gains in all areas. A novice can also recover from a workout at a minimum of 48 hour window. So in 48 hours, that novice is ready to get back in the gym, no matter what kind of exercise that you throw at the novice, and they're gonna make steady gains up, 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 up. And uh, that's great. We wanna stay, actually, it, it, it's like, well, I don't wanna be a novice. We actually wanna stay in the novice phase as long as possible because that's where we're gonna make the most improvement. Once we get up to the intermediate stage, well, now it's gonna take us a week to recover from a workout. and so we're going to have to start to use some very careful programming and training because it's like, well, if I work legs this day, I'm going to have to wait a whole week before I do legs again, if I'm going to make any progress. So then we're going to have to start doing split workouts and we're going to have to create complications. An advanced athlete, it's like, yeah, I'm an advanced athlete. Great. No, an advanced athlete actually is not so great. Advanced athlete might take two weeks to a month to recover from a workout you're going to have to increase the complexity of your training and during your training period like let's say it's a three month to six month training period you're going to only be able to develop one skill at a time so that's not good we the goal isn't to get up to that advanced level of athleticism the goal is to try to stay in the novice to intermediate levels as long as possible and we can do that if we figure out a couple of things so first of all we have to figure out what we can train. Remember, that's part of my identity. I don't exercise, I train. That's who I am. So I have to figure out what I can train, what's difficult to train, and what's impossible to train. Now, the easiest thing to train is actually your central nervous system, okay? That's learning the moves. So when I perform a squat, the first time we squat, we're terrible at it. You know, we don't have the balance and and essentially all the progress that we're making when we're increasing our squat numbers is because our nervous system is adapting, learning the most efficient way to get that weight up. Nothing's really happening with our muscles or any of that stuff yet. It's nerve, it's conditioned the nervous system. Same thing with endurance. You know, you have a lactic acid buffer in the body and you're running along and then you start buffering lactic acid. That's a part of your nervous system. And so the greater your ability to buffer lactic acid, the more endurance you're gonna have. That's how it works. So again, we're training every one of these categories. We have to think about how the central nervous system works. Now here's the trap that people get into. And it's easy to get in this trap because there's a lot of physios a lot of physiotherapists that have YouTube channels and that are trainers and all this other kind of stuff, you know, as their side gig, you have to understand like, what is a physical therapist? What is their function in the world? Okay, uh, they function- Help people with injuries. Exactly. They help people with injuries. Are you injured? I mean, right now. I, uh, I was, uh, well, still yeah. healing my shoulder, but yeah. Right. So, I mean, you personally, yeah, but like, um, most people who are in the gym training are not injured. So why are you train that way? Why are you train them like you're injured? Okay, it makes no sense. And so you can always tell physios because they're talking about muscle groups and they're like, oh yeah, you know, your pelvic tip is below 15% and your anterior hip, you know, whatever. It's like your abductor muscles need to contract here. Like they're thinking every, about everything from like, uh, oh, this person's injured and we need to do these things to recover. And, you know, we hear about a lot of this stuff like functional fitness. What the heck is functional fitness? Oh, this is what I can go out and do. Uh, in the real world. Yeah, of course, everything that we do in the gym should be things that you can go out and in the real world and do. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be doing kip ups all day long. When the heck are you doing kip ups out in the in the real world? Okay. And again, you hear that sound? That's like a thousand people clicking out of this video right now, you know, <laughs> with their 
with their rogue fitness sweatbands on. They're like, what are you talking about? Kip ups are the bomb, dude. And, you know, because, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, dude. because again, <laughs> when we go to their values, they don't have their values figured out because their values are tribalism, right? Yeah, and exactly. They're part of this club of people that do like the kip ups and you know, <laughs> Don't give me exactly, and they're not. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't want to call them out specifically, but yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Right? You know, so again, that's a thousand more people that just clicked out of this video. That's great, um, but hey, maybe you'll come back and when you're not getting the results you want, and you really want to buckle down and train. Okay, so if you're listening to a health expert or a fitness expert that's really talking about how to train your body, they should be talking about the bones, not the muscles. Okay. Because the muscles only contract to move the bones around. So think about that. You're moving the bones around. It's creating levers. And you're using that to create force. So the technique that you use should be to make those levers work for you. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, Don't worry about the muscles. Okay. Nervous system is easy to train. Okay. The difficult things to train that are associated with that, with the nervous system you know, VO2 max, not impossible to train, very difficult to train. Your vertical jump, not impossible to train, but very, very difficult to train. Those, you know, that's not the low hanging fruit, still important. You know, you're, you're, in my opinion, your total athleticism can probably be measured by your vertical jump, you know, and it's, it's very, it's kind of like IQ. You can increase your IQ. It's very difficult, but you can do it. It's, it just takes a long time. So anyway, yeah, so we, we look for the things that are easy to train and those, hopefully there's some bleed in the things that are hard to train. So if you increase your squat, is that gonna increase your vertical jump? Hell yeah. If you increase your squat, is it gonna increase your sprint, your speed? Yes, okay. If you increase your squat, is it going to increase your endurance? Uh, how does that work? Okay, so think about it. Like, let's say that you know, you're know running marathons or something like that okay so each time you put your foot on the ground and push off you're performing what's called a sub maximal contraction okay not the greatest force that you could put out with that foot but it's a percentage of your total force output it's a sub maximal contraction okay if you're able to increase your maximal output then that sub maximal contraction is less of a percentage of force. Therefore, the stronger we get, the more endurance we have because it's less work for us to do compared to what we could do, what our potential load is. Everything comes from strength and strength is the, is the thing that stops growing after a while, after we hit that certain age. And it's the thing that we need to work on today before time runs out. So that's the yeah. highest priority is what you're saying is, is strength building, not necessarily I, your vo muscle volume or any of these other things. It really comes down to strength. You know, ultimately, ultimately, yes, strength, I think, is is the most important thing idealistically. Now we go back again and we start looking at values and look, when, when I'm coaching somebody, uh, I ask a ton of questions. Okay. I just don't start saying, okay, do, do squats, do whatever I ask question after question after almost to a, a, an annoying degree. Cause I want to see where they are, what their goals are. You know, somebody calls me up and says, Hey, you know, uh, I got a wedding in six months and I want to look amazing. Um, we might not have time to do so, some of the same strength output that we do is, is if your calendar is wide open, it's like, I got all the time in the world. Yeah. Build your strength first. And then we'll start working on weight loss or hypertrophy or whatever. Um, but yeah, like if, if you got a goal in mind and you want to reach that goal again, that, that goes back to the values. It doesn't necessarily have to be strength. I'm just saying that strength is one of the easiest grabs. You can develop your strength very quickly and it has the greatest benefits. So as we start thinking about what you actually want and if you have time to develop it, yeah, strength is going to help everything. Uh, and I think it, it, it's super easy to build strength if you know what you're doing. Um, and any, anybody can do it, you know, big, tall, skinny, fat, whatever, and get that strength up. You're going to, you're going to be able to do so much more. You know, you're going to be able to accomplish so much more in any other area that you want to invest time into. Okay. So Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let me find my eraser. 
So in, in biology, every organism ever created works the exact same way. All right. There's no way around this. We have a stress. We have recovery. We have adaptation. Stress, recovery, adaptation. I don't know if you could hear that. Yeah, we uh, could. Stress, recovery, adaptation. Every organism ever works on the same model. So what is the stress? That's the workout we do um, that provides the stress to our bodies. Recovery is what happens after we work out. And the adaptation is how our body responds to it. So it's very important that we understand the stress adaptation recovery model because uh, when we're figuring out what we're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be eating, all this kind of stuff, we got to figure out, we got to make sure that we're, we're basing on this model. And again, how does this relate to your current level of fitness? Because if you're an intermediate athlete, you're going to need more stress if you're going to get more adaptation because the adaptation process is going to be harder. If you're an advanced athlete, you're going to need a ton more stress and a ton more recovery, okay? So all this stuff changes. You gotta know where you are. So it's like accelerated returns, basically. Exactly, yeah, and we have this process also called periodization, where you have to start cycling your workouts through. Now, listen, there's a difference, okay? And, and people really need to understand this because this is, this is another term that we see all over the internet. And I think it was started by that guy from uh, what's that guy's name from P90X, that Tony Horton guy, yeah. right? And he's like, oh, body confusion. That's what, no, body confusion is nonsense. You don't <laughs> want to be confused. You want to know exactly what you're doing and have a purpose in your training. Body confusion is not training. It's getting sweaty, okay? At no point in time should your body be confused. Your body should know exactly what it's supposed to do, be doing. So we do not use body confusion. We use periodization. So that just means that we're shifting to a different skill set in a prescribed period of time, and it's intentional. It's not randomized, okay? We're not shuffling a deck of cards, and you could buy a deck of cards on, on Amazon that has like all these different exercises. It's like, oh, what are we going to work out with today? And you flip over a card and you just do it. No. That's not training, okay? That's that's stupid, is what that is. So don't don't do that, okay? I, I will right. I will admit that until now I've bought into the uh, body confusion myth, uh, so I'm happy to have it debunked along with any other myth that I have potentially in my toolbox. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, for some people, look, for some people, you know, developing the ultimate health plan, the ultimate fitness strategy is great. For some people, getting sweaty is a heck of a lot better than than what most people are doing, just sitting at home, okay? Be real about that. I mean, most people yeah. are not doing anything, you know? So it's like, well, I've been doing all this and I've been wasting my time at the gym. Yeah, I mean, kind of, but it's you could have been wasting a lot more of your life by just sitting at home doing nothing. So at least you're developing habits and routines and you know you're getting your body into some kind of physical shape it might not be 100 percent optimal but it's there right what would you suggest for people like me who have no idea mentally like i i lack the psychological capacity to understand how my body responds and reacts to anything that i do it doesn't even occur oh, to everybody me. does it's not you it's the whole world chase nobody okay, understands this <laughs> okay, you cannot you cannot assess your oh my gosh, man. So this is another one of these things. And if you hear this phrase ever spouted during anything, you know, you, you're gonna I want you to click out faster than your than the body confusion people just clicked out of this stream with me. Okay, because my philosophy is completely incompatible with that stuff. So if you have people that are like Bro, just listen to your body, man. Just listen to your body. Your body will tell you what to do. No, it's not going to. If you listen to your body, you're going to be sitting on the couch watching Netflix all day, eating Frito pie or whatever you guys do. That's what we eat here in Texas, like lots of Frito pie and Dr. Pepper, uh, you know, because that's the the, the Waco and Plano uh, industry, right? So, uh, yeah, like that's, that's what you're going to do. Like that's what your body wants to do is just conserve calories, get as much fat on it as possible just in case there's a famine and you can survive your way through it okay but that's not what's good for you 
there's no way there's no way that's not what good so like being able to dissect that is hard okay and it takes a lot of precise calculation and a, a lot of times it takes a coach i mean you just said you start working with a personal trainer and you're getting lots of good results all right you got somebody who's telling you what to do not the other way around not like oh like imagine this chase like go up to your personal trainer and be like well today my body's actually telling me um that i'm not gonna do uh rows today or whatever you're doing like your, your personal trainer is probably gonna kick you in the butt and be like i don't care what your body's telling you to do my clipboard says you're doing this right get on those rings and start doing some ring dips or whatever i don't know what, what what she's having you do but that's just you know uh, an example so we're, we're getting into this next phase anyway so the next thing is recovery right recovery is super important because it's second phase rotation model so before we start figuring out what to do we need to start thinking about what we can recover from okay yeah we can't just start doing stuff like crazy and then it's like oh but also i only sleep two to three hours a night okay yeah so your recovery is going to be trash like essentially if your recovery is trash you're going you're going to progress from a novice to intermediate much much quicker and from an intermediate to advanced much much quicker a lot of people can stay in the novice space for a year to a year and a half if the recovery is on point think about that progressive overload for a year and a half you can put up some serious numbers after that year and you can get really jacked you can do a lot of like just amazing things if you can do that but if all of a sudden it takes you a week to recover okay well then your adaptation curve goes goes down logarithmically right and then advanced well forget it so if your recovery is shot um you know you're you're just not going to have that adaptation process and and look there's been uh i mean look at the olympics you know look at the the um what was it the the that scandal from russia did you see that doctor documentary uh, icarus with uh the doping scandal where they were like you know coming up with counterfeit piss or whatever for their drug samples it, it is a crazy documentary if you haven't watched that it's it's great but anyway like yeah this has been i mean the whole uh performance enhancing drug industry was based around being able to recover faster developing compounds that work with our hormone system in order to make our body recover faster that's that's the whole basis for the whole doping scandals and all this other kind of stuff you know what else it's also the basis for a multi-billion dollar supplement industry okay which some of it works, but most of it doesn't. People are hoping to recover faster, so they'll take these supplements, you know, and then a lot of times they'll spend hundreds of, I know people that have spent close to $1,000 a month on exercise supplements when it's like, dude, you could have done this with just whey protein and creatine and gotten the same results. And, you know, and maybe improve your sleep and gotten way better results. Okay, so what can you recover from? That needs to be a question that you address before you start programming any sort of workout or any sort of exercise routine. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're either going to get hurt or you're not going to improve fast enough. Okay. Right. Because we have to meet that. The, the goal with the stress recovery at is that after we recover and we've adapted, we want to hit that stress again as soon as possible otherwise we're wasting time and if we hit it too early before we recover and adapt then we're not making progress you see so there's the, these short little windows and we got to figure these out otherwise again we're wasting time at the gym and you know we don't want to do that so yeah your sleep your diet your macro micronutrients being able to track that how many people are actually tracking what they eat how many people weigh themselves every morning not too many it's simple to do download my fitness power whatever i'm sure there's competing apps i do it just keep track of it yeah that's great man yeah i mean i just get don't on like taking photos how long does that of, take uh yeah like five seconds i just don't like taking photos of myself and sending them to my trainer all the time that's the one thing i don't do but i do it all the rest <laughs> well the photos that's part of this all right that's your accountability right yeah i mean yeah that's one of those things where it's like well you know maybe uh i'm not gonna eat that entire bag of Oreos or whatever, you know, like maybe because I got to take that picture, 
you know, so that's, that's, that's what that trainer has built into you for your accountability. Okay. And that's a good thing. I do like me some but Oreos, yeah, I mean, but not that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that's the, what people will eventually learn when they get with a good coach and they start looking at this is that a lot of these dopergenic things, okay. Which means things that, you know, create dopamine in the brain. Okay. You're, you're, um, you know, um, Oh, how do you, how do you explain dopamine? Uh, it's, it's like, um, the excitement neurotransmitter. We're like, Oh, that's cool. You know, Oh, that's shiny. Um, and, it's basically the same chemical experience that you get if you do a line of Coke, right? You're just like, oh, wow, this is great. That's what you get from eating junk food. And once you kind of bypass that and start looking, instead of looking at, at just short-term gains and looking at the big picture, looking at three months from now, suddenly that little dopamine burst that you get from eating Oreos is just not worth it. You're just like, what? why would I do that? Like, dude, I want a six pack, you know? Uh, I don't. I don't want Oreos. Like that's, that's actually nothing what I want right now. That's just my brain tricking me. It's just a trick, you know, that we fall into and, you know, getting with a coach also that understands dopamine and can get you to do a dopamine detox where you kind of recalibrate, you know, your um, excitement centers in the brain so that you can just kind of like, you know, you don't need such big stimulus all the time to feel good, um, you know, just get you to dial back and adjust and be like a normal human being again, that can make a huge difference in developing good habits and setting up your life the way you want it. That's so the next thing I want to talk about, need. yeah. INTPs yeah. need that, <laughs> the, the dopamine <laughs> detox, sign them up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know of an INTP. Uh, that I'm thinking of right now that needs that for sure. Um, but anyway, back I, on topic. I think uh, I'm also thinking of that same one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're listening, you know who you are. Yeah. Right? We, we need to go on a hunting trip. All right. Get out. Damn straight. Get out into nature. All right. That's what we need to do. All right. So, um, you know, the other thing that affects uh, recovery is is reactive oxygenated species. It's it's a complicated process, but it's like how your body deals with oxidative stress. Um, essentially, the stress that you're putting your body through is the oxidative stress, and part of the the system for recovery has to do with with two things: the immune system. A lot of things people think immune system is like, oh yeah, I got a great immune system. I don't ever catch a cold, or I don't. The immune system that that's part of the you know the interleukin immune system, but we also have like the the cytokines and we also have the uh, chemokines that repair muscle tissue when it gets injured so it's actually the immune system that's making your muscles grow uh that's actually doing the repair a lot of people don't understand that um that's the I didn't most until primary now. function yeah so what we what we have with uh the reactive oxygenated species is we have these compounds that can come in and they can kind of clear up all of the all of the uh, basically, it's like uh, the biochemical waste that we've created, and then immune system comes in after all that stuff has has been cleaned out. Then the immune system can come in and start repairing it. Can't start repairing it if there's uh, the, if the oxidative stress is still there, but before ROS comes into play because. Uh, immune system, it can't come in and tag the areas that have been injured so that that get repaired because there's too many positive charged ions that are keeping these negatively charged uh, chemokines from coming and tagging where it needs to be in place. So again, like, are you aware of that system in your body? Am I aware? You know, I, I worked out today. No. Am I aware of that happening? Like, I don't, I don't know of that. No, but I, I try to make health decisions that facilitate that and you know, I try to eat foods that facilitates that. I try to rest and recover and I choose my recovery activities very wisely. I also, you know, I have some supplements that I take that really help with that too. That's, that's, you know, that's part of my game. Um, and I don't spend a ton of money on them either because I don't like wasting money. But anyway, once we get through all of these things, well, now we get to the tip of the iceberg. And we can start talking about programming, what to do in the gym 
So you see how like we've been talking for a long time, you and I, about lots of things that are critical to health and fitness. And we haven't talked about like, all right, well, uh, how many bicep curls are you going to do, bro? Like haven't talked yeah. about a word of it yet because it's so far, it's so far from all of the stuff and it's, it's, it's basically irrelevant. We handle all the other stuff first. Okay. So again, I'm just going to pull this out so that uh, everybody everybody knows what they could be getting here. So look, got high res version of this chart that's not drawn by me, my crappy handwriting, okay? We got a very comprehensive model of stimulus and recovery here that shows when your training is too easy and when your training is too hard to so have a visual way of recognizing what you should or what sort of program you should be doing what kind of what your recovery should be looking like for planning and we're also going to give you this for free okay your rate of adaptation curve bases your complexities for your workout in your beginner intermediate advanced elite training platforms um, wow. how many months you should be staying in each one of them and what you should be doing here so this is to optimize your genetic performance potential because you know we're all built like not all of us are going to be elite athletes okay i'm sorry right there's very few people that have those genes but you can do a lot with your body and i'm anybody listening right now i promise you this i promise you this okay three to six months in three to six months look at that look at that rate of adaptation here even if your genetics are crap Okay, you got the worst genetics on the planet. In three to six months, you can be in the top one percentile for strength in the human race. It's it's that easy. Wait a minute. Okay, well, three it's, to it's six easy. months. Yes. If you're training correctly, if you're recovering from correctly, if you're recovering correctly, all right, you got good technique, and your values are in it, and your goal is I'm going to get strong. I promise you. I promise you, it's not that like putting up big numbers on the squat, on the press, on the deadlift is not that hard. In fact, what people think are like, oh, somebody's like, oh, well, what's, what's a big squat? Oh, 185. Okay. Uh, 185? No. You should probably get to 185 in like a week or two. Okay. Big, like a big squat. Okay. Go watch Eddie Hall deadlift. Okay. Go watch Brian Shaw squat. Okay, these are these guys are lifting thousands of pounds. Yes, they are elite athletes, but they have people in their gyms. You know, you got Wes Sims up up in Colorado, and he he gets people that coming off the street that are putting up three four hundred pounds in, in in a matter of months. You know, you got Mark Ripito in Wichita Falls, Texas, one of my favorite strength coaches, one of my mentors. You know, for for the stuff he he gets people coming in right off the street. He gets high school kids that come into his gym and and start putting up. What, what a lot of people would be considered huge numbers. And he's like, look, it's not that much, you know, in, in, in our gym, this is a common thing, you know, people putting up these numbers, you know, people get this within a few months if they're eating right and they're sleeping and they're doing what they're supposed to do. And they, they, you know, they're coming to the gym they're using good technique, you know, they're not extending their range of motion too far. So they're not getting injured and you know, all that, all that good stuff. So, you know, it's fine. If uh, it's 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 way easier to do than than most people think, you know. And again, the other thing that we have to understand is that when you're staring down a loaded barbell and you're looking at it and you're seeing all that weight, there is the mechanism in your brain that says, "If I fall down, I could die." Right? And that's true. You fall forward, that could be game over for you. Um, you could get a serious injury doing this. If you're doing something stupid now, how often does that happen? I've never seen it. I've heard about it. Like there's, you know, it's rare, but it could happen. Your brain knows it could happen. Your brain's like, yeah, no, don't do that. You stay on the couch. You know, that's that whole, listen to your body crap, right? It, your body's going to be like, that's a scary amount of weight. And so people stop progressing because they're afraid. And this is true. And I'm not saying that to, to try to, uh, make anybody feel bad or call anybody a coward or anything that is the mechanism that's the mechanism i go through whenever i look at my work set i'm like well i've never done that before you know today i'm gonna set a new pr 
never done that before. That's a little scary. I can feel my heart rate going up. I can feel that adrenaline. And in time, you know, if, you, if you've got good values, you're going to learn to use that adrenaline to your advantage and help get that way up. Okay. So anyway, you know, what your workout looks like and, you know, whatever people always ask me like, Hey, how come there's no fix your gut workout plan? Or how come there's no fix your gut diet? And if you're asking me that question, it's because you haven't heard what I have to say about anything else. Like you're not thinking about the wrong thing. You cannot have a one size fits all diet because again, diet's part of your recovery. You can't have a one size fits all workout plan. That's a part of your programming because listen, uh, every, you know, you got to figure out what somebody's values are first. You got to figure out what their technique and fitness level is. You think I can find two people at the gym who are the exact same fitness level. And you're going to tell me there's a one size fits all model for all of them. Man, go screw yourself. That That's not, that's not realistic at all. Like, forget it. You're going to have to go through and do the work and the work starts here and then goes here and then goes here. Okay. And look, anything else I'm here to tell you is a shortcut. So you want to take shortcuts, you're not going to get, you're not going to be increasing your squat. You're not going to be increasing your deadlift. You're not going to be increasing your I guess the INTJ is just uh, clicked out just now because those are the shortcut people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I, I Well, maybe you can figure out how to reach them and, and figure out, well, yeah, there's a shortcut here. I mean, there are shortcuts, okay? There are shortcuts in all of these little systems, but you still have to tackle them in order, okay? Because look, this is the hierarchy. It's, it is not something I made up, okay? It is biology. It, this has been around since the very first organisms, okay? Not to say that it's like, oh, well, you're talking about these like uh, archaea um, microbes in, you know, in the ocean have a value system. Actually, yes, they do. You know what that value system is? It's to survive and replicate themselves, okay? So absolutely. Okay, they may not have the same nervous system that we have. They might not have the same cognitive capabilities and the awareness and consciousness that we have, but they 100% have values because values are biologically deterministic, okay? <laughs> again, hey, uh, a thousand people just clicked out again because like, no, man, that's not true. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's why there's life on this planet. Okay, so whatever, you know, but it, it's anyway, just yeah. like that guy in YouTube comments earlier today telling me, how dare you, Mr. C.S. Joseph, say that women's hypergamy is a good thing. And I'm like, but it is. It's biologically good because it keeps us alive and our race is longevity. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> like, get, get over your, like, judging the past and judging our biology based on the ethics and the morals of the day, which are completely subjective. I, I, I don't. I don't get why people even go that far. It just boggles my mind. And I do the same thing with fitness too. Well, and what it shows you is that people think about things from a very surface level and they haven't really <laughs> dug into this stuff and they've never really talked to somebody else about it um, that can dig in deep, can dig deep within themselves and figure this stuff out. Okay. And look, Man, I don't know how many conversations you have I have had where you've had to kind of kick me in the butt to do things. And at the time, maybe I was resentful. Maybe at the time I was scared or whatever. But I wouldn't have ever done that on my own. And I don't feel ashamed to say that because I don't think anybody would have. I just, I honestly think that it's very, very difficult to determine your own values. And if you, if anybody in this world can look at you, help you with that, they have a gift. Okay. Because that doesn't come standard all right you don't get that for uh, a 399 extra entree at lubies okay like that takes a lot of skill to develop okay and a lot of time but anyhow i want to go back to uh this analogy of let, let's say that there's this kid and he comes into the gym and let's say this kid has uh, a 24 inch vertical high jump okay so from flat foot on the ground can jump straight up in the air 24 inches that's about that's about average with the average So let's say that kid, we're, we're, we're setting up a system for this kid. We're developing a training program, not an exercise routine, not a fitness program or something like that. We're figuring out a training regimen to increase this kid's athleticism. Okay, so how are we going to do this? 
Well, first of all, we're going to work on that squat. We're going to get that squat way higher than 135. Okay. We're going to get them on a barbell. We're going to have them squat. And every day we're going to put a little bit more weight on the barbell, a little bit more weight on the barbell. We're going to give them about 48 hours to recover in between workouts. And we're going to see how long we can push that. We're going to tell that kid to eat, 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 eat. Don't worry about weight loss right now. We'll, we'll take the weight off later once you achieve your core strength. Okay. Let's say within the period of a couple months, we take that kid from 135 to 305. What's going to happen to that kid? That kid going to be faster, a lot faster. That kid going to have a little bit higher vertical jump, a little bit, not too much, a little bit. That's a hard thing to train. That kid going to have more endurance. Okay. That kid, you know, going to have more speed, more quickness. Okay. So then everybody's like, oh, well, what about his mobility? What about his balance? Okay. Did the kid perform a squat? Was he able to squat down and stand back up? What's wrong with his mobility? Okay. Did he fall down when he was squatting? What's wrong with his balance? It's like, oh, you get that strong and, you know, now it's time to work on up there like the gymnasta fit or whatever. Um, folks, have you ever heard of these people where it's like gym fit, where they do like gymnastics routines and stuff? And I got all the respect in the world for gymnasts, but I mean, that's not the only way to train. And gymnasts definitely do weight training. And if they tell you they don't, they're not a good gymnast. Okay. Because gymnasts are super athletic. So it's like, yeah, well, if they can't get into perfect pike position, when in the world are you getting into pike position in your life? I mean, come on. Like, oh, well, they can't, uh, you know, they don't have the shoulder flexibility for muscle ups. Okay. Did they get up out of the bar and are they able to do a muscle up? Okay. That means they probably have strong shoulders and they can press a whole lot of weight. Okay. So again, if it's not a problem, why are we solving these phantom problems that don't even exist when the, pro when a big problem is we need to get stronger and we have a limited amount of time to do it. So take that same kid. We got him up to three Oh five now. Okay. This kid's lifting a lot more weight. It's providing a lot more stimulus on those muscles. We're feeding this kid. We're feeding good food, lots of protein, you know, lots of carbohydrates, moderate amount of fats. This kid's wrestling. What's going to happen to that kid's muscles when he's now lifting 305 instead of 135? More stress equals more adaptation after recovery. That's basic biology. Okay. If he sticks around at 135 forever, he's not getting the same amount of stimulus. Okay. We can increase the rep range. We can do it. We can play with it a lot more like that. I mean, how many reps are you going to do much easier just to increase the weight until they can't do it anymore. And then we can start playing with the rep ranges. Okay. So yeah, again, balance, flexibility, all that stuff. If it's not a problem, why are we spending so much time fixing problems? We don't even have, you're thinking like a physio. Yeah. You're not thinking like an athlete. Okay. So yeah, weight loss. Look, you told me your story about when you were 15, I think, right? And you were yep. jogging, you had your home gym, you're doing all this stuff. Okay. Let me, let me break this down for you. All right. I'm going to use props. You get, you like, uh, your guests using props on your show yeah. all about props. <laughs> no, okay. <we're> not. <laughs> so, all right. So I've got, uh, an M and M right here. Okay. You see that? Is that coming through? I've got an M and M. So you walk for one minute. Okay. You're going to burn about four kilocalories. If, if you're walking at a high enough rate of speed, you're going to exert enough energy to burn about an M&M. Okay. Now you walk for 30 minutes. All right. Let's see if you can see here. You're going to burn 30 M&Ms. You got it. Let's say you go from walking to jogging. You're going to increase your kilocalorie output from about four to maybe 4.4, 4.5, 4.6. I don't know. Depends on how hard you're jogging, but not too much. Okay. So you go from after a 30 minute, it's if you choose to do a 30 minute jog instead of a 30 minute walk. Okay. How much is that going to increase your M&M &M count? Tell the difference. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Just, you know, okay. So, okay. Let's, let's say we walked again instead of jogged. Yeah, that's uh, is that I, worth I, it? Yeah, no, no, it's not. Okay, no, 
because we're putting more impact on our bodies, we're putting more stress out there. And what's happening is that all of the energy that we're putting out through a jog is being absorbed by the joints. Because again, we're thinking about bones. We're not thinking about muscles. It's all being absorbed by the joints, you know, through the ankle flexion, okay, through the hips, through the knees, okay, through the pelvis, you know, and we're not really burning that much more energy. So we're not getting that much benefit out of it. So I don't know why anybody's jogging is basically what I'm getting at. It's it's just one of those nonsense exercises that people are just doing to get sweaty. And that's fine. I guess it's better than nothing. But it's basically jogging is for people who can't make up their minds on whether they want to walk to burn some calories or whether they want to sprint to increase their speed. Make up your mind. Pick one doing this hybrid thing. You're not getting the benefits really of, of much of either one. You're putting a whole lot of stress on your body instead. All right. So again, the story you just told, you don't think I've heard that a million times before. Oh, I jog all the time and do, well, cut it out. You don't need to jog. What are you jogging for? Just go on a fast paced walk. You get so much more benefit out of that because it doesn't put the stress on your body. You burn just about as much calorie. I mean, you want uh, just, or, you know, if you're that worried about it, just next time you eat a bag of M&Ms, take a few out and, you know, throw them away, flush them down the toilet or something. If you're that worried about, about that few calories. Okay. So yeah, I just don't understand why people are doing that. You know, th this other thing where it's like, um, you got this, uh, high intensity interval training, the, the hit workouts, you heard of this, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You, you, you pick these things, you go all out you know, for whatever, like a minute, and then you do something else for a minute, okay? And look, again, it's about technique. They haven't figured out the technique yet, and before, and they're starting to program first before the technique. So I see people at the gym, and they're using valuable resource in the gym because there's only so many barbells, right, that our gym has. And so they've got their barbell out, and they load it up with, like, I don't know, a plate on each side, maybe two if you're lucky. So maybe they're 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 – deadlift in 225 and you see them uh they you know they grab the barbell and they pull up uh, step back down and then they start hopping back and forth on you know the barbell back and forth back and forth all right done uh grab the barbell uh, one rep set it back down hop 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 that makes no sense like what are you training are you are you training jumping back and forth or are you training strength pick one right does that make any sense to you at all I, it's funny because I'm doing uh, the like I do I do uh, like supersets of various things, and I'll just I'll do a I'll do a rep, a deadlift, and then I'll do um, and then I'll do a cable row right next to the deadlift thing because I just move the mat over and set it out there, and then I go back and forth like that. But yeah, I, I do I know why I'm doing what I'm doing? Nope, I'm just doing what I'm being told. That's the problem. Okay. It'd be nice if That's, it was not as amusing yeah. like that. Amusing being, right. it means without thought, because I am amusing okay. in the gym. <laughs> well, let's let's analyze that. Okay, so you're training the deadlift, which is the My best exercise lift. out there. Yeah, and it's it's great for building up strength, particularly in your back. Okay, and your posterior chain. All right, so you're getting really strong, and then you're pairing that with a cable row, not hopping back and forth like a bunny. Okay, you're doing a cable row. Is it a seated cable row that you're doing? Yeah. Okay, so you're doing a seated cable row, also targeting the back muscles. All right, so what you're doing is you're doing a superset, which is going to save you time in the gym because you don't want to waste time in the gym. I love that. And you don't, you don't want to waste other people's time in the gym. <laughs> no. No, look. And this is important, all right? People need to figure this out because people waste so much. I was in the gym the other day and I went to change clothes and I saw a guy looking in the mirror, okay? I went and did a whole workout and I came back. Same guy still there in front of the mirror. It's like, oh. Oh, you're, you're doing a heck of a job, buddy. Fist bump him on the way out, you know? Dude, you're killing it. <laughs> you're crushing this. Why, why are you doing that? When I go to the gym... It's like I have a business appointment. I'm there for a reason. I do what I need to do, and then I get out. I don't like going to the gym. 
I don't like putting stress on my body. It's awful. It's terrible. I hate it. And I'm scared to do it. Okay. I go in there and do it. I take care of business and then I leave. Okay. I'm not there to pick up women. Okay. I'm not there to make friends. I'm definitely not there to coach other, these other idiots that are in there doing crazy stuff. Like I'm not going to pull them aside and be like, Hey, listen, but no, it's not my job. My job is to train. That's what I'm in there. And that's what I'm going to do. So I go in there and train, work hard, take a shower, leave. Okay. Probably put my clothes back on first and then leave. Right. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm there for. So supersets, what supersets can do. And even if you're doing a pure strength training regimen, because you're a novice athlete and you're looking to get strong so that you can use that strength to develop other skills. Okay. You can superset your next set. So if you're doing squats, you can superset your bench warm up into your workload. Okay. You can, when you're doing bench, when you're doing your work sets, you can start warming up on your deadlift or maybe on power cleans or whatever your next thing is in between. That's going to save you a lot of time and time is valuable. Okay. And it's also going to free up the equipment sooner so that when you're done with it, somebody else can come in there and use it because you're not sitting there on your cell phone, looking at your Instagram for 20 minutes while somebody's waiting behind you. Like, Hey, are you going to squat? Are you here to work out? Let's go. All right. Yeah. When you're in the gym, you want to have, and for lack of a better term, you need to have that alpha state. If there's any time in your life that you need to have that alpha mindset, it's in the gym. Okay. You know, you need to be able to look somebody right in the eye and say, Hey, I need that machine or, Hey, I need that power rack. Are you done? Okay. What are you doing? Are you rehabbing a knee injury? You done? You know, why, why <laughs> are you doing this? Okay. And yeah, maybe I sound like a jerk doing it, but they're not accomplishing anything. It's not like I'm no. ruining their life. Okay. But I am there to accomplish something. So I'm going to walk right up to them and I'm going to say, listen, man, are, are you going to work out or can I jump in or what? You know, you, you, the music you listen to, that's important. Like, I don't like to listen to any music while I'm working out. I'm a music guy. I don't like to listen to music when I work out because I want to be with that pain. Okay. I want to be with that discomfort. For me, that's my alpha state, right? For other people, you know, if you listen to music, pick the music you listen to very carefully. Okay. The music you listen to in the gym shouldn't be the music that you listen to on the way home from the gym. Because if you're listening to that kind of music on the way home from the gym, you're going to get arrested for reckless driving. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. You're listening to music that's going to pump you up and get you to do stuff and stuff. Okay. You're not in there. Listen to this bubble gummy hip hop stuff. You know, you don't want that. That's not alpha level music. Okay. That's beta stuff. All right. Get rid of that. Delete it from your workout playlist. No, 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 Katy Perry allowed. <laughs> yeah. Katy Perry screaming her music at you, telling you to, you know, carry roar or whatever. Like, no, like, that's great. Um, not for me when I'm lifting. No, I want to listen to like, okay, look, here, we'll do, we'll do the two prong test for music on your workout playlist. Okay. Prong number one. Can you understand the lyrics? Okay. Are they singing the lyrics in a way that you can understand them? Okay. The answer to that should be no. You can't understand what the heck you're saying. Mine doesn't Number even two, have lyrics. <laughs> that's great. The, the second is my workout playlist should be something to the effect of when I go and look up the lyrics to see what this dude is screaming at me about. I cannot make any sense of them whatsoever. Okay. Case in point, Dio. All right. Holy diver. What somebody explained to me, somebody explained to me in the chat, what is a holy diver? You have any idea what a holy diver is? No. Okay. I don't either. Okay. See his stripes, you know, we mean. I have no idea what the hell that means. Okay. That's why it's on my playlist. I can't understand them, and I don't know what the heck he's singing about, but it gets the weight up, okay? <laughs> it gets the weight Period. up. Yeah. That, that's all you need, all right? Me, it's so uh, how Lauren... are you dressed at the gym? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's important. It's especially for the ladies, okay? Like, ladies, you really want to have all your stuff hanging out? Is that alpha? Is that alpha for you, maybe? I don't know. Uh, you know, 
it's really off putting. I actually go to other places in the gym just to avoid avoid that because it's just like why like I, there's times where i'm at the gym and like i'll have women getting in front of the machine in front of me or something like that just so that like they could show themselves off and i'm just like I, like i can only do nothing but just close my eyes like the worst part is like when i'm on the rowing machine like that's, that's the worst time because they, it always happens when i'm on the rowing machine and i'm just like i'm just gonna mm -hmm. close my eyes and just do my freaking workout. I don't want to look at you people right now. Get away from me. That's why I like going super yeah, late, I mean, but it's like no one there. My goodness. It, it, it could be a distraction, but that, that's not even the point. All right. F for you and your values. All right. You're, uh, you should have the same values as I do when I go there. You should be taking care of business and you should present yourself in that way. I'm here to get strong. I'm not here to be hit on. Okay. That's a waste of time. There's exactly. plenty of other places you can go to get hit on, not in the gym. Okay. Dress like it. Dress like you're there to take things seriously. Okay. You don't want people interrupting you in the middle of your set. You know, you want to get your workout done. You want to get out of there. You want to go to a place that's more fun when you're not in pain, you're not suffering. Okay. So that, yeah, you can get hit on by tons of guys out there because you look awesome because you took your, your training seriously. Right. That should be the goal. Am I wrong? No, I mean, is that is that misogynistic of me to say? I don't know. I mean, some people would say that, uh, oh, we're just being shallow and whatnot. And to which I would respond to like, okay, it's nice that you think that we're being shallow, but are you to prove that you actually oh, are somebody taking care of yourself? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just think maybe they haven't dug deep enough about their values, and it's like, why are you in the gym? You know, and is that the best place for you to accomplish what you're seeking out right now? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You know, send me some hate mail if if you disagree. Okay. If if you really disagree, okay, and and you know, and you think that I'm totally out of line here, okay. Don't just hit the thumbs down once on this video, hit it twice because that'll show me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever works <laughs> yeah. I you should see all the thumbs down that I get all the time you should have seen them from earlier this week with all the drama in the Facebook group all right well it happens I don't know man yeah. I people are always getting in my face I had a guy in my face earlier today and I just responded to him with like bro I don't care well you have this attitude and you obviously think you're better than me and I'm like no I don't actually think I'm better than you I just don't care man like I don't know why you think I have an attitude I just don't care and he keeps telling me, like, as if I do care. I don't. I don't. People like projecting. They like projecting at the gym, too. And it's really frustrating. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I don't like drama. Drama gets in the way of getting stuff done. So, I'm, you know, if you want to start drama, I'm not going to be there. I'll just tell you that right now. And I can also tell you uh, something about Chase is that Chase is here to help people. And the, the stuff he's saying is to help people grow. And sometimes people aren't going to like it. You know, sometimes it's going to be a wake up call for you and you have to face some sort of demon or something that you have been bearing and you don't want to look at. And, and that's really what the issue is. It's not, uh, you know, it's not an issue with Chase. It's a, really an issue with you inside that you have to face. All right. Because Chase is just here to help you. Okay. If you want to be helped, well, you know, there's the door, I guess. But you know, he's brought a lot of benefit to my life. So I would suggest that maybe of all the research that Chase has done, the hours of sweat and hard work that he's put into everything, maybe, just maybe he might actually know something and maybe you should maybe listen because he might know something that you don't. So just take a listen, you know, again, it's a, it's just the thing, like check your ego at the door. Where are you right now? And what do you need? Right. And a lot, most people don't know, you know, and it, it's kind of sad. It's just kind of the way our psyche, you know, our defense mechanisms work is it's like, oh, something. Yeah. Yeah. It, man, that's just how it goes, dude. It is. I mean, like I've been doing this for, I've been doing this for 12 years, at least, you know, the, the psychology stuff and, you know, and we're going to keep going and we're about to release our new uh, software uh, a week from yesterday, a new personality test, which is going to like make the interface so much easier to use. And it's amazing. And we put a lot of money and a lot of time, and a lot of work into it, but it's just that it, 
people just don't appreciate it. The thing is too, like I've also been on my fitness journey since I'm since I was six years old and I'm turning 34 in just a couple of weeks. And literally I've been at it since I was six trying to figure out, like, I remember like being in front of my parents and literally crying my face off as like, as a, as an 11 year old trying to figure out why my breasts were bigger than my mother's, you know, at that age. And like, like, why is this happening to me? You know, like, it's just stuff like that, that trying to deal with and, you know, and I'd like to think that I have my values in there, but in terms of like, you know, the technique and, and then the recovery, I think every other step above the values, it's one of the where it's where in my personal journey that I've had to deal with. And honestly, I've been outsourcing to other people to tell me how to do it. Like how how do I as an individual or any individual basically begin the journey how, what books do we need to read what is the resources that we need to be tapping so that we can actually make sure that we are following you know the making sure that our values are there and having the technique and then having the the recovery and then the programming properly because it seems to me that everyone is doing this backwards everyone wants to start with the programming and then do the values yeah. at the end and i'll admit yep. that's me that's absolutely yeah. me you know how do i stop yeah. that how do i turn that around yeah, that's the thing is um, you need those values to bring the best out of you because, you know, it, it's it's easy to do. It's also hard to start and hard to, hard to continue. Okay, there are some great books out there. Um, you got the Mark Ripito Starting Strength is a great book. Buy it right now. Um, you've got the Jim Wilder's 321 great book. Um, you've got uh, Wes Sims out there, um, you know, absolutely great. Um, but here's the deal. All of these people that are, you know, the absolute best that are, you know, th that they've got world champion athletes coming out of their gyms. And they've also got people who don't have those genetics, but have completely turned around their lives, come out of their gym. So people from all, all different uh, genetic levels, okay, or, or benefit, you know, they're, they're not going to tell you, Hey, read my book and go out and do this. Point of Mark Repito's starting strength is to train coaches, how to coach people to coach the lifts wrong and they're getting hurt. They're not using their levers to get the weight up correctly. Lack of hip drive, okay, is a big one for the squat. People that don't understand that their hip needs to come, that you need to push down with your hips and get that weight up, okay? Proud chest for the deadlift, okay? Get the shoulder rotation, grip squeeze for the press, all right? You, you, I mean, having a coach do that, and, and they have, you know, they have uh, virtual coaches too where you can, um, you know, you can just take your phone or whatever and film yourself doing it and they'll say, okay, that's good or whatever. But when they say rack it, okay, you get the weight back on the power rack because you messed up and you need to stop, but you need somebody to be able to push that button when you're not doing it right and say rack it, because that means you're doing something wrong. You're about to get injured or, Hey, we need to talk about something. And if you're doing that on your own, you don't really have that mechanism. Yeah. You can use a mirror, you can do whatever, but it takes a long time to condition the nervous system. Again, it all goes back to what can we train to condition that nervous system so that adding you know, over and over and over years and years of squatting to where you know if you're doing it right or not because you've done it so many times and if something doesn't feel right well you know it's like well it's time to rack it to where you can start kind of highest levels of fitness i think so or somebody who can develop a custom program for you custom diet custom supplement program work on your sleep work on all this stuff work on your technique and ultimately figure out what sort of values you want and what you want to get out of life because look like i said that the clock is ticking and everybody has their number and once you get there you're done son that's it for you and yeah after that number you can still probably go up a little bit you know you can still probably go up you know a pound and a half every couple of months or whatever but i mean ultimately you're in that advanced stage you're top out even if your max squat is only just the bar well you're unfortunately in that 
advanced stage because you waited too long and you missed your window. So that's, that's kind of, to me, that's sad to me. Um, your body has this potential to do great things and you took your potential and you wasted it. And to me, that's, that's almost an immoral thing to do because we're, it, we're born really to be able is. to do these things. It, it really is. And, and that's one of the th reasons why I, I'm constantly talking about the importance of fatherlessness because I maintain fatherlessness is the number one cause of mass cultural hypnosis, mass cultural ignorance. But regardless of our fathers, regardless of that, it's still every individual person's decision that they have to make themselves to take responsibility for meeting their own needs. And for some reason, people don't see fitness. They don't see they don't see it as a need. They don't see health as a need. It is a need. And that's a form of self-respect. If they're not doing that, no one else is going to respect them. No one's going to want them. No one's going to stick around for them. That's just reality of the situation. And people have to be willing. doesn't matter what gender you are. You have to be willing to humble yourself enough to realize that that's a situation. There's no excuse. You can go get a minimum wage job and for like 25 bucks a month, you can go to Planet Fitness, have like 2,200 locations across North America, for example, and, and you can have like massage equipment after your workout or even before your workout to loosen up or whatever before you get started. And it's all nice and easy and no one's going to get upset at you and just go for it. There's really no excuse. There's no excuse for like not being able to use a Legion Athletics macronutrient calculator to calculate your macros or, uh, you know, read various books to understand how to like why it's important to count your calories and have a MyFitnessAppal account with a $60 a year premium membership. There is no excuse because you're not making it a priority. Like you could prioritize your Netflix as much as you want, but I'd rather pay for like, you know, my, my fitness pal subscription so I can get that handled. You know, there's just no excuse, like work hard for it. You know, like if you, if you don't have the money, you actually do have the money. I mean, if you're here, you're obviously eating, so you have money somewhere. So like you have to make sure that you're prioritizing things properly. And if you're not doing that, we'll figure it out. It doesn't cost anything to go on a four mile walk. It doesn't. So do it. You know, like there's, just there is no excuse there is no excuse and i think especially like when you consider the dating pool when you consider what you know some would call the sexual marketplace and whatnot you know men like there there is especially no excuse for you to be shirking your male burden of performance you need to go perform so perform like there, like you have to get warrior it's part of the mature masculine that's just the reality of the situation and women like you need to be building queen archetype for you to even begin the journey for the mature feminine you have to start there first it's not necessarily where it is for men it's not the first priority for men but it's the next priority for men it's still a priority for both genders but it has to be done and if you're not willing to do that then you're everything's going to fall apart and then you're actually harming everybody else think about it with the with epigenetics, ge genetic expression, uh, genes passed on through generations, all these people that are not taking care of themselves will just end up harming future generations and lower the actual total health of future generations over time. And all of this, uh, you know, what we have in our genetic bank account nowadays will be gone in a couple of generations if we're not careful. And then again, natural selection on its own will wipe us out. Like, is that really like? This, it is a responsibility uh, for every human being to take care of themselves in this way and to manage their fit, their fitness and their health. To, to claim otherwise is, is absolutely a form of harmful ignorance, willful, harmful ignorance, okay? And it means that you just rather listen to people like Edward Bernays who convinced, pe convinced women to think that Torches of Freedom, aka, you know, sm cigarette smoking for women is a great thing. Like, you know, the majority of the people, especially people watching the stream right now, have just literally given themselves over to propaganda. And that's literally where that came from. And that's why we're here is to kind of dispel that bullshit uh, propaganda right now because people are making life decisions based on that propaganda. They're making health decisions based on that propaganda. And they feel responsible. They have the feeling that they are a responsible human being and a responsible adult and they're making all these nice health decisions just like my mother when she was making those nice health decisions but oh we can't have fat because if you eat fat you're gonna get fat i remember her telling me that as a little kid 
And that's not true. It's propaganda. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Eating fat does not make you fat. Uh, eating eating above the uh, a certain amount of calories will make you fat. Eating more than you're, uh, you know, like consuming more than you are burning, that's, that's what that's going to do. You know what I'm saying? But people just don't want to accept that. They want to eat ad libertum and think it's okay. Yeah, it is okay if you're living in the wild where you're constantly having to survive on a day-to-day -day basis and you're pretty much guaranteed to be burning more than you're eating on a regular basis if you're subjecting yourself to the, uh, the, to the whims of nature. But if you're not doing that, which most people aren't doing that, then you can't eat ad libertum. You just can't. So, like, are you going to take responsibility or you're not going to take responsibility? The problem is, is that there's some of us out here who are such the victims of propaganda and such the vic victims of this conditioning. And so many resources out there are that way. It's that, yeah, I'm willing to do what it takes. I just don't know how. You know, I don't know what the starting point is or I don't know how to move forward. I don't who who should I mentor under or who should I learn under, etc. You know, sometimes it's obvious. Go find the people who are successful and ask them. OK, that's that's a great start. Um, but, uh, you know, and then I've, I've actually done that a few times. And then I found out that they were juicing, taking steroids. And it's like, OK, great. So that was just it was just bullshit. then. you know what I mean? Like I've it's hard to put your faith in the people. So you have to make sure that while you may put your faith in someone, you better verify them. Verification is everything. Trust what people say, but verify. And you have to do that with every aspect of society, not just health and fitness, folks. Super important, you know. Perfectly said. That's why you're the best, man. <laughs> you know, that's that's Thanks, the bro. perfect way to put it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I, I mean, if you, if you just listen to that and you don't want to make a change in your life right now, there's I mean, get a knot. Why wouldn't you want to, you know, you mentioned, you know, about people with, who are fatherless, you know, and I'm really fortunate to have my dad in my life. My dad was my first coach and he was tough on me. And I, I love him for it, you know, and he was a great coach. He was a great athlete himself, you know, um, and I'm passing that down to my kids. My kids can squat. My kids can press, you know, I, I got a seven year old and five year old boy. They've been doing this since they were tiny, tiny, just with PVC pipe. Again, just learning the motions, you know, training their nervous system. It's part of what we do with our men time. We go out to the gym and we lift weights because that's what men do, right? Yep. Again, maybe that sounds misogynistic. Women can do it too. That's not what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But you know, just as far as the development of the father-son time, you know, that's really important for us to do. I have a daughter, you know, too, and I'll take her out to the gym. I'll work out with her too. That's fine. Um, you know, uh, so, and I want her to be strong too. I want her to be stronger than my boys. Um, and in some ways, you know, she's, she's just a two year old right now. In some ways she already is she's super smart and I want her to be strong too. I want her to be lethal, absolutely lethal. And I'm going to get her that way, you know, just like my sons. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a father and maybe your window's passed on this, but maybe you have a son or a daughter and their window hasn't. See if you can get them out to the gym. Maybe work out with them. And although you might not be in that beginner novice stage of, of working out, and but they are. So you're just there with them, working out with them to support them or whatever. And you know, at, at the very least, you know your progeny can be warriors, okay, or queens, depending on the male or female mature archetypes. You know, they can they can develop those skills. You can make your children's lives better than yours was that's one of the greatest gifts you can pass down to your children and and that i think is part of your responsibility too as a parent to get up there and do that so hey you missed your opportunity maybe you can make sure that your kids don't all right if again you're still in that window and you haven't made the decision to go out and build your core strength that's a huge mistake 
because once you build that core strength, it's going to last a it's going to last a lifetime. It's going to last until your dying day. Okay, you're not going to get osteoporosis. You're not going to get you know atrophy and all this other kind of stuff. You're going to be strong. You're going to keep your strength. Okay, with with cardiovascular stuff, you know, you, you go, you're one of these joggers, and you jog around. Yeah, it's going to be very quick to build up your cardio, or you can jog for longer and, and go on these longer jogs or whatever. It also goes away quick. You know, you take some time off, and then all of a sudden you're out of breath again. Strength isn't that way. It takes a longer time to build, and then you keep it. And if you ever need it again, you just go back to the gym and you come back up to that point much, much quicker. So I've trained guys who were former college athletes, some of them even professional athletes that had really good core strength. You know, they they worked out for a living, you know, developed their bodies. And then, you know, life happened, whatever, you know, they stopped playing sports or whatever. And then they come back in the gym. All right, let's get back. You know, these guys are scared skyrocket you know and, and ladies to skyrocket into you know what they the numbers they used to have it's just really easy to get back because again you condition your nervous system all right you were thinking about your bones not your muscles you did it the right, right way and so you keep it and you've got the values the lifestyle the core beliefs that are going to sustain that forever which is the most important thing so you know don't don't waste your opportunity because it can you know the, the what what is the actual cost of investment you know what's the opportunity cost of going to the gym you know you mentioned like oh yeah you gotta pay a gym fee or whatever look people okay, how people spend money on what they want to spend their money on okay you got a cell phone okay like people are like oh i'm too poor i can't afford that uh dude you got a iphone 12 max plus ultra or whatever in your pocket right now you're telling me you can't afford uh you know a 20 buck a month membership you know whatever some of these gyms have just these rock bottom membership plan they'll come out with these sales like yeah 12 bucks a month and just because they know people are going to sign up and, and not go so it's free money for them a lot of times so you know like you can, you can make it happen don't that's that, that's just an excuse you know but the opportunity cost is so low return on investment is incredibly high and it lasts the rest of your life i don't understand why anybody wouldn't want to capitalize on that yeah i i completely agree that's why i'm working hard to capitalize it on myself i just hope i'm not it, doing it wrong <laughs> well hey you got a coach you're working with a coach um you know at some point you know, yeah, you can go out and try to find the very best, the best coach, you know, like if I need help, you know, I'm going to hire Chase or whatever, but like not everybody's going to have access to Chase. Okay. Like Chase is one person. Okay. And I'm lucky to have access to Chase. I really am. But there, you know, maybe I'm not, I can't get up to Chase's level, but I can find somebody in his coaching network that is, you know, and I can, I can really benefit from that too. Um, and so like a lot of times we seek out the very best, you know, and, and it's not going to start until I optimize. It. Okay, well, at least you're going in the right direction, you know, just get a coach, right? right? Start working with them. You're going to be able to tell whether or not that coach is good or not, depending on your results. If your results aren't good, your coach isn't good. Okay. You're going to know in a hurry within, you know, a month or two, if those numbers are going up for you whether or not you got a good coach or, you know, whether, uh, gosh, I threw my back out again, maybe not a good coach then if you're throwing your back out again. Right. So, you know, it, this is a rocket science. People are the numbers going up, you know, and if they are, you got a good coach, right? Are you healthy? Are you, you able to do your workouts and recover? Okay. Then you got a good coach and there's plenty of good coaches out there. So don't let that be an excuse either of like, well, I don't know if I have the very best of the best of the best coach. Well, you probably don't, Okay, but that's okay. You've got somebody working with you and you're working towards your goals. And if they're getting you there, then you got a good coach. If they're not, find another coach. It's it should be an easy thing. Yeah, I, I, it's 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 so important. And and like I said before, especially if you can find a coach that is the same type as you. And my coach is an ENTP like me and she has been extremely valuable in helping me out 
in certain areas, but she, she also is like, you know, she has her SI inferior, but then her SE demon does not give a damn about my SI inferior whatsoever. She doesn't care about my pain or my experience or whatever. And she's like, you're just going to do it. And I don't care. And you're going to do it. Or I'm going to fire you as a client. And I'm like, yeah, okay, don't fire me as a client. Just keep going. <laughs> I'll do it and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. Like, it was nice to hear when she told me, that, you know, Chase, like, you are the my most compliant client that I've ever had. And it shows, like, she's got a little graph of my progress, and she gets, like, my weight loss graph, and it's just, like, a straight line down. There's not even, like, it's it's pretty, it's, it's a great graph. Yes, it's, like, you know, it's, like, going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But, like, the trend line is, like, it's it's there. You know, and it's like, wow, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Everything I've ever tried is the first time I've ever actually had real results that are measurable, you know. And we've had to, we've, we've been through a lot together. Like, I'm still dealing with a shoulder, shoulder uh, this uh, shoulder injury. You know, sometimes she'll, she doesn't even require me to go walking. I'll walk four miles every day for the three, because we do it in periods of three weeks, you know, whatever we're doing at that point in time. And I'll just tack on additional walking on top of it, mostly because I'm stressed and the walking relieves the stress. Uh, it, it just does. I don't know why, but and because I take calls while I'm walking or I I read books while walking, etc. But there's always some kind of min-max optimization thing you can do, and that's just one of the things that I do. And and uh, I was thinking about moving from where I live, uh, you know, to like the big city, and then I'm just like, no. No, that's too stressful for me. I'm just going to, you know, and, I, and it was a health decision. That's why. It was a health decision. I figured that I'd have better health staying here in the middle of nowhere than I would living in the big city again. You know, so it, just from a stress point of view anyway, because I stress very easily. I'm, I think I'm too sensitive, but some people would disagree with that. I don't know. But the point is, is that I'm trying to learn how I respond as much as I can I and paying attention. Training myself to pay attention in the first place, that was one of the hardest things to do. You know, that was a huge obstacle for me. And I'm still not always there. It's always something new, but but yeah, it's it's worth it. It's um it, it, I have been in a state of perpetual depression since I've been in been six years old because of my health. And now, for the first time, I'm off my meds. I'm my. Uh, I had liver disease for a while. I basically don't have liver disease anymore. I'm improving, and you know the depression is going down over time as the improvements for my health get better and better and better. And I have to say, uh, it literally is the most important thing in my life. The most important thing. Because without it, uh, I wouldn't even be here. You know, the, the the whole reason this community exists is because I thought I was going to die of liver disease. That's why we're here. You know, and now for me to, you know, years later to be on this road of transformation and be able to move it forward is, is extremely important to everything who I am as a person. You know, some people think it's about confidence or looking good or getting the girls or uh or getting the attention from the guys or getting cat called or all this bullshit that doesn't matter what really matters is that i get to wake up every morning it's survival for me it's a do or die situation for me my aroma taste is so high i i literally had the hormone profile uh in August of 2020, I had the hormone profile of a 55-year-old woman. A hormone, like that's how bad it was. And now that's been completely reversed, you know, which I'm very thankful to have. And it's only because of waking, waking up every day and taking responsibility for meeting my own needs of fitness and health. Quite honestly, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Um, the battles you went through and, you know, you've had it rough. I'm not going to lie, you know, um, and maybe you, like you said, you built your community around this and, you know, maybe this channel wouldn't be around if you hadn't have had those rough patches. But yeah, man, I remember like, uh, 
and, and I, I talk to people like this all the time and, you know, a lot, a lot of times the people that come across my, my desk or whatever are like this is because they, they have it unusually rough. It, you know, they had something that didn't go right, you know, and they've been to doctor after doctor. And it's like, oh, I can't figure this out. It's, it's like the same story. And it's almost like there's an entire, um, there's, there's like people that prey on people like that have these like, uh, oh, let's try these homeopathic uh, remedies or whatever, you know, uh, let, oh, uh, let's dangle this necklace from your neck or have these balance arm, you know, just any little thing to prey on these people that have had it unusually rough. And I, I think that's sick. You know, I think it's like these people have had it hard enough and now you're taking their money away. Okay. You're offering them false hope. That's, that's horrible. You know, and, and even your doctors, they, they, they try their best, you know, and it's like, Hey, can, can we, can we do that? No, no, no. And their ego gets in the way too. And it, it's, it's just really sad that they don't just take the time and it's like, Hey, this person's really suffering. Can you just take the time to figure out what it is and not just brush them out the door and get onto their next person? That, and that was one of my fears um, was that one of the doctors that you had, I don't think they were taken as seriously as they could have. And you know, I was, I was afraid for you too. Like, I was like, I, I don't know if Chase is going to make it, man. And I was terrified. Um, so was I, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you pulled through, man. And, um, and I, I still think that, that you're not out of the woods completely yet. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're after your meds, you're in remission, you're doing great and everything's coming back. But, you know, I, I think that, um, Still, I, I, and I hope this isn't true, man, but, but I, I'm hoping that it, it doesn't come back and, and that, Me too. Um, you know, you don't end up with issues and, you know, I don't, I don't get, need to get in the details here with it, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you're taking care of yourself because if for some reason you go back down where you have another attack or something, you know, you end up back in the hospital, having your body in great shape, you know, that you're, you're going to have that resilience to be able to fight like hell. Okay, something goes wrong, you know, something reappears, you're going to fight like hell and you're going to win, not just because your body is in the right shape, because your nervous system, your mind, you know how to overcome it. You know, you walk up to the bar, the barbell, right? And you do a big deadlift, right? Now, life affirming. It, it is life it, affirming. <laughs> it, it sucks at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy hard. Set down the weight. Boom, you did it. And it's just like you're living in another world now. It's like, wow, I just did that. All these other little problems seem so superficial. These other little things that like uh, bother you. You know, you see like something on the news, and it's like, oh, this happened again. You're like, I don't care. I just hit. I just hit a 545 pound deadlift. Like, why would I care about what's going on in the news? Like, you know, that's insignificant to me, you know? And it, it's like, same thing. It's like, well, I'm back in the hospital, but you know, I just hit that lift. So I know I can conquer it because how many people can deadlift that much? Not many, right? Cause a lot of people are scared of the deadlift. They're like, oh, it's going to hurt my back. In fact, doctors will tell people not to deadlift because it's, bad for your back and they'll tell you not to squat because oh that's bad for your knees okay i can tell you my back and my knees are much stronger because i deadlift and because i squat but man i'm so happy that everything's going great for you and that, you know <laughs> you're, take that 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 graph that you were talking about you know of your weight loss graph and the inverse of that is where your life is going man everything is working out for you you know, you're doing so good, man. Your, your channel's growing. You look great. You know, you're, uh, you know, every, just Getting every, there. everything in your life is, is working out for you right now, man. It's, this is a really great time to be you. And I, I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> hey, yeah, I am. I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it more. Uh, uh, Titus, Titus, our, our mutual friend gives us, uh, gives me a lot of crap. He's like, he's like, he told me last night, he's like, you need to take a moment. And I'm like, what? He's like, you need to take a moment and just, appreciate what you've accomplished because what i saw last night when i looked at this new software that you guys are about to release you have no idea what you're about to unleash upon the world <laughs> like it's okay a, it's incredible yeah it's incredible yeah i i mean who else could have done that i mean I, uh 
you I, I'm very it, thankful. <laughs> you plucked it from your mind. Uh, this just isn't like some kind of, I almost made it sound like some whim. I mean, this is like countless hours of research and, you know, you, you did the whiteboard thing like I do, just whiteboarding all this stuff out, just connecting all the pieces or whatever. And then bringing a concept like that into the world is something special. I don't think anybody else could have done it. Okay. And it's going to help a ton of people, a ton of people. Yeah. And, and I hope, I hope that that's what it ends up being used for i hope that the the people in this world that seek to do harm don't end up using it for the wrong reasons yeah and i sincerely hope that and i hope that if anybody is considering doing that that they think really carefully about their actions and they think about the world they're living in where they want their children to grow up and play and not do that yeah because exactly. there will be consequences you might get rich off of it but there will be consequences and that's gonna be hard to live with if your kids grow up in that kind of world right that's not the world i want for my children and you're right yeah. there, there's huge risk with the uh you know with people using the science you know for their own personal gain and harming other people throughout and there's nothing i could do to stop that but i mean that's why we kind of have this policy of mutually assured destruction all right well if you're going to use it for evil, well, guess what? You know, you, you're taking this to use it as a nuke. Well, everyone's got the freaking nuke. So, okay, have mm -hmm. at it. And then maybe they'll be like, okay, yeah, I should, I should probably think twice. You see what I'm saying? We don't. Yeah, need I, I, I think, I think there's something to that. And I think there's something else where if they're really following you and they're really following your work, hopefully they're looking inside themselves and they're improving to the point where they wouldn't even consider doing something like that. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that they, they don't just stumble upon this thing and be like, oh, great. You know, that they're actually paying attention and they're like, no, no, no. Because anybody who follows you, anybody who watches your channel would, would never dream of doing anything like that. Right. And, and so I'm, I'm hoping that actually that's one of the protection mechanisms that work is actually the mind that came up with that system is also the same mind that helps people to grow and become better people in general. And so that that effect of making people into better versions of themselves, you know, they wouldn't go and, and use that kind of stuff for to, 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 for harm. But, you know, it's uh, maybe not to the same degree as, as fitness. Yeah, you I mean, you could go to the gym and get jacked or whatever and go out and just start, like, punching babies in the face with all your strength. I mean, I guess there's a way to do that. But, you know, like, it's not to the same degree uh, that we're talking about here with, like, systemic corruption and, and whatever with, with this system. But, yeah, I'm excited that it's coming out. Um, I'm hopeful. I think it's going to change the world. Um, and, you know, I'm with Titus, you know, like I, you're standing on top of a mountain right now that you built. And how, how could that not feel good? You know? It, it, it was very unexpected. Uh, that's what I would say. It was very unexpected. It's more of like, I didn't really do it with necessary like the goal of self-aggrandizement or getting rich or any of these things whatsoever had nothing to do with that it was more of i have to do this and that's mm -hmm. it that's it, it's literally just that and also because yeah. you know I, I like i you know i was i was afraid i was gonna die and i was like i gotta give something to my children i gotta give something to my son i gotta get this on what's in my head into you know, uh, and and so, and you know, some of it's obviously what my mentors have taught me. But you know, curate it all and get it out there right now, and then hopefully, you know, my son can pick it up and move from there. And at least I left something behind, something of value behind. I'm just thankful that I've been given the opportunity to take it to the next level, the next level, the next level, the next level, the next level. Um, and I'm I'm very uh, fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity. Um, I, a lot of people think I'm entitled about it, but it's not about, it's not about that at all. Like I, <laughs> people don't know how many random people I talk to on a daily basis and I do help them and I don't get paid for it. I do it all the time. And, you know, and we even do that with the men's group. The men's group doesn't pay for access. We don't charge for that. They're in there. And we have this giant mastermind, you know, for the men's group. We're trying to do the same thing for the women's group, et cetera, to help them move forward in the mature masculine, mature feminine. Because we're trying to change the world in a better 
fashion. And it and it really does start with one person and we have to take responsibility and lead by example. And that's why we're having this show right now. Fitness is part of that. And yeah. my fitness journey has been hard, but I'm not giving up and I will never give up. Uh, even even if I was post window, you know, as you would put it, I still wouldn't give up anyway, because damn it, there has to be a better way. I, there always is where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, I, I don't like life. I don't I, I don't like this reality. I don't like these things. And that's why it's my duty. If I know something, well, I'm responsible for what I know. Therefore, it's important for me to actually like go out of my way to improve it. You know, mm. it, but it's so easy to have people like because I have I have so many haters and and people that are my closest friends sometimes even become, you know, the haters because they just can't handle me telling the truth. You know, it's like they, they get so scared about connotations of words more than considering that I'm using textbook dictionary definitions of those words. Mm. And it's like well, you'd get upset at me for not using the dictionary definitions and you're telling me these colloquialisms, but you would get, you know, you get, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I do. I could, I could be perfect and still it wouldn't, I'd be still be rejected. So what I have to do is just move forward regardless of how anyone feels, regardless what anyone thinks and not care and just care about one thing and one thing only telling the truth. That's it. And mm. if I if I'm wrong, I'll take full responsibility for it. I have been wrong a few times, uh, twice specifically in the season 17 playlist here on this YouTube channel, and I've come clean and I've taken full responsibility for it. Told people what I did, talked about conflicting ideas, and be like, this is how it actually is, and this theory of mine is wrong, you know, etc. We went through that, and that's what I do. But you know, <laughs> I had a guy this morning tell me about how arrogant I was. And I'm like, in about how I, I think I'm so much better than he is. And I'm like, I don't think I'm better than you. You're probably smarter than me. I, I don't know. I don't know you. And I'm not here to mm. say that I'm better than you. It's not what it's about, man. What it's about is at the end of the day, how are we contributing? Are we going to have a better mm. day tomorrow? It's like um, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and give you a future and a hope. That is the point. If we're not doing that, then what the hell is the point? Then we're then we're then I guess we're just hedonistic. You know, going to the gym is proof that we're not hedonistic. Like measuring our calories is proof that we're not hedonistic, that we're not animals. That's that's important, you know. Uh, absolutely should be. I mean, I don't know how I mean, you might have had an easier time of not having a hedonic mindset or trying to, you know, get these short-term rewards. Uh, I was 300 pounds, of, man. Your, your spirit. <laughs> What's that? I was 300 yeah, pounds, true. man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and like you said, your your hormone panel was, was jacked. And, you know, that, that that was actually the least of your problems. But, but like, it's like you're, you're staring at your mortality, right? And you're like, I got to get this done. But I got news for everybody else, even though if you don't see an immediate threat, you're all going to die. Okay. Everybody's going to die. You can't escape it. You have a limited amount of time. So be like Chase. Don't hate on Chase. Be like him. Achieve something great. You can do it. In fact, it's your moral responsibility to do it because you can. You can make the world a better place. So go do it. Don't you know, hate on other people that are having success, make your own. It's out there for everybody. If there's we have this famine mindset for everybody, it's like, oh, there's not enough this, there's not enough that. Oh, there, there's not enough YouTube for everybody. I mean, come on, you could you could be on YouTube 24 or seven, you could film yourself sleeping and have a channel on YouTube. Not enough YouTube, yeah, come on. I mean, stop making excuses. Just go out there and do it, okay? Achieve your potential and what that means is when you talk about potential is you're bargaining with yourself for something better which means you have to sacrifice something now and a lot of people they don't understand what that sacrifice means and you're not gu necessarily guaranteed to get something better in return and, and there's that fear there but you got to overcome it and just push through so you know hitting on people isn't going to get you anywhere it lowers your status as a human being 
you know, if you're out there, oh, this, well, that's because this person that you're really low on your status, you're, you're low on your potential and other people are seeing you when, when you do that kind of stuff, you leave those kind of comments, whatever. And, uh, people see you as a, you just don't understand how you come off as a person. You just come off as like a really low status person. That's just hasn't figured out life yet. Just like a wandering child, just wandering around the world. Okay. Don't, don't be like that. Okay. Just if you have those thoughts, okay. Just say, okay, I had that thought. Take a breath. All right. Now I'm done with that. Now I'm going to move on to try to do something to point myself in a little bit better direction. And I'm going to try to make just, just kind of like progressive overload with weightlifting. I'm just going to do a little bit better every day, every day, every day. And eventually I'm going to be successful. Okay. That's all it is. That's all anybody ever does. Anybody who's ever had success ever, it didn't happen overnight. It's, it's, it's like that uh, lottery analogy that I used earlier. You know, you, if, if your success is winning the lottery, you're not going to keep it because again, it all circles back down to values. I mean, it's turtles all the way down. You know, it's, it's about your values and your awareness of your values. And, and a lot of times having, having a coach, you know, help you with those values and help you get pointed in the right direction because it's really hard to see in yourself. So uh, early on, uh, late, earlier on in the conversation, you were talking about sort of the, the process you're going through and, and you were talking about your difficulties with, with introspection, right? Your ability to see, um, you, you know, it's like you knew why you were doing things and, and you know, you, you were achieving things, but somehow you were getting lost in that process of self-actualization. So I was wondering if you could walk me through there and, and how, how did you develop, I guess, the awareness of lack of awareness? Like, how did you like come to the uh, conclusion that uh, you were missing that awareness and what did that feel like? Well, I came to the conclusion only because I was able to understand the, you know, the psychology, because I realized that my brain is very aware of the why, but it is not aware of the how, like at all. Uh, you know, like, and, and yours is the opposite. You're Mr. How. You can figure out how to do anything. Uh, and, and mine, that's like my biggest weakness. I don't know how. And I, I know why I got to do it. I got to do it. But how? How do I do it? Like, that's my whole life. It's just been, that's why I read so much constantly reading i read i didn't even realize how much i read i i kind of got a little entitled with my reading recently because i started projecting my reading on other people and i'm like and, and then i'm like oh yeah that's right regular people don't read <laughs> that much I, I forgot about that because like I, i'll get i'll get in at least two hours of reading a day at, at minimum you know it just happens you know between you know, my walking four to six miles a day or whatever, it's, it's going to be there. And uh, I just, I just didn't even realize, but it's, that's why, is I'm just trying to figure out how to do stuff. I just want to know how, kind of like talking to you about the hunting trip. You know, I, I want to know how to cut up an animal and prepare it and not have it harm me or anyone else and be able to take care of them and, you know, do that and keep the fur and maybe make some clothing out of it, you know, respect the land and what the land gives and then give back in the process and have that relationship with nature instead of being a hedonistic, having a hedonistic relationship with nature, which I think is very unhealthy for all human beings. Like, like I, I have to explore that as part of, you know, King warrior, magician, lover as part of the warrior archetype, as well as also the lover archetype, because, Sometimes you just got to love on the land. You got to love on nature itself. And I'm not saying, you know, hey, let's all be tree huggers. What I'm saying is it's about respect. It's about conveying that level of respect, not just for our fellow man, but also for nature itself. Because guess what, folks? We are part of nature. You know, we, we have to do that. But yeah, getting to that point, you know, it's like, hey, I realized I don't know how anything reacts to anything. I know why, and I can see long-term consequences, but short-term consequences, immediate reactions, uh-uh, that ain't my thing. And it's so hard because I'm just Mr. Spinning My Wheels. And I'm like, I have no clue. So I had to surround myself with people like you to help me understand the how, because the how is the one thing that's missing from an NE user's life. You know, I, I have the we have the why, but we don't have the how. And and the how is the reactions. I was even telling some guy earlier today, I'm like, listen, you know, 
stop judging people like intentions and actions are the same thing. They're completely separate. And I also told them, you know, you, uh, it's not my fault that you don't know the consequences, the why, you know, uh, the consequences to your actions. Stop relying on other people's reactions. Reactions mm -hmm. are the how. Consequences are the why. Consequences are the NE. Reactions are the SE. And it's so interesting how everyone projects themselves on how they see the world works onto other people and they judge people based on that projection and it's like stop we're all assuming mm. everything all the time and i'm no different i assume all the time and i regret it i even apologized to somebody in the youtube comments uh, two days ago because i assumed about something they said and they called me out and i'm like oh yeah you're right i did my bad you know i'll 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 take responsibility for it but it's just simple things like that so yeah, that's understanding that I had to be more self-aware. It required a higher amount of self-discipline than I've ever had before. But then again, self-discipline is the hardest thing for an SI inferior to learn. But at the same time, self-discipline is the only way that I can be successful as a person. I have to have it. Uh, and even if it costs me, you know, it's like, it's like when you're on your knees crying out to God Almighty and you're praying for wisdom and he's like, are you sure you want wisdom? Are you sure? It's the most costly substance in the cosmos. I'm like, well, yeah, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, you'll see. And then sure enough, you come to realize that the only way to gain wisdom is through suffering. That's it. That's the only way. You can have it in the world. See, that's the thing. I could have someone like you, just like my other ISTP mentor, my cousin Mike. And I remember him telling me, getting in my face one day, Chase, you read a lot of books. You sure know a lot, but you have zero life experience to back up anything that you're saying to me. So as far as I can tell, it don't mean anything. I don't care if it's true. If you haven't done it yourself, it, there's no meaning there. And like when I realized that I had to have the self-discipline to actually apply what I know and test it out and experiment and do trial and error on all of these things, it was at that point that I realized, okay, now I know what I have to do. I may not know how I react to things, but I know that I have to at least bother to keep track of what my results are with every individual decision that I make. It takes an extreme amount of mental self-discipline to at least try to remember or at least track what has happened and what I'm doing now. It's hard. It's super hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, quite frankly, so that I can at least measure where I've been so I can see where I'm going. Otherwise, it literally is, it's worse than a mental echo chamber. It's worse than that. It's more like I'm blind and I'm leading myself, which is also blind. And it literally is an internal blind leading the blind. And I'm literally just in this endless spiral or a ditch of ignorance that I can't dig myself out of because I'm not even bothering to go out of the way to record or to, um, see where i've been or or even see what i'm doing right now because sometimes i'll just get stuck in where i've been and then i keep repeating where i've been now and it's like well wait a minute i'm doing the same thing over and over again that's insanity right you know it, it's and it's confronting my own insanity that was the hardest thing i've ever done and it all it really came down to just me having the faith that I would figure it out and just not give up. That was the only, that was, that was it. That was it. It's all I could do. You know, other people would have a different approach, but it's all I had, you know, trying to survive through it. Cause I've been a survivor my whole life. It's just, you know, just, just recently starting to thrive, begin the thrival process. It's always been survival up until like, basically me being, you know, 32, 33 ish and starting to really improve, you know, in 2020, a lot of people had a bad year in 2020. I like health wise, I had a much better year. And it was because I humbled myself enough to listen and have the self discipline to keep track. And that's literally the only reason, you know, having that eureka moment and then just slamming it. You know, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. You know, that's 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 all we have really as human beings. That's what we need to do, you know. Yeah, I, I love that, man. I love your story. I love how 
you know, you, like you said, it's like, well, most people aren't reading books. And you think of that, like when you first said that, I'm like, yeah, it's the immature archetype, but no, uh, the precursor to the magician is the know-it-all grandstander, right? And so you can read, like you said, like you can read all those books, but then you have to be able to actualize what you've read in the world. And that's when you grew up. That's when you took your first step as a man is when you took your knowledge and began to create you know, maybe that was your first YouTube video. I don't know, like whatever that process looks like. But I mean, you're Chase, you're one of the most disciplined people I know. I mean, you're working your butt off, man. Just all in every area of your life. I, I just, it amazes me that, that you would say that you're, that you're not disciplined. I mean, look, look at your channel, how many videos you put out all the time and, you know, look at your work ethic and, you know, look at what you do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely, you definitely are a mature male, you know, it, not just, not just in the warrior, you know, not just like, you know, improving your body, not, not just, you know, improving your mind, not just improving your appreciation, just in, you're working at it from all angles. And again, you know, like you're very wise, you know, very, I, I very much appreciate the kind words and, and the feedback, especially um, coming from you. I have a great respect for ISTPs, and it's always been the ISTPs in my life who've been able to supervise my behavior in such a way where they've always been able to mentor me and guide me and put me back on the right track or at least question me. And if necessary, even expose me, expose me to new things or expose me for my own entitled uh, behavior that I've had or my depravity, um, which, uh, you know, between you and uh, my cousin, Mike, and my former boss, Kevin, you know, all three of you gentlemen have always been there to, to be that person to at least at a minimum call me out in those situations. And it's allowed me to, you know, make me stronger. A lot of people think that conflict doesn't that just is just stomps on people and then they stay weak. That's not really true. It as iron sharpens iron, so does one man to another. And that's that's really integral. And that's my relationship with with you ISTPs out there to be able to have that. And and I and I think that's awesome, you know, that we have that opportunity. So anyway, um, we're actually at the end of our show right now. Uh, so if anyone wanted to contact you or hire you or, uh, or, or anything related to that, how would they go about doing that? Uh, go out to fixyourgut.com. Um, I write articles there. We have a YouTube channel. I put up new videos and stuff. Um, my email address is jason at fixyourgut.com. I'm not really on social media. We have another person that handles all that. Me and social media don't really get along all that well. Um, it's just it's just a me thing. Um, no judgment out there. I don't want to be that ball of yarn, man. That That's not me. As soon yeah. as you said that, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's it's just for me, it's it's not a good thing. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's not for everybody, but, uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, just Jason at fixyourgut.com, you know, send me a line. Um, love to hear from you. Love to hear what you're up to, what you're doing. You know, I'd like to hear what your values are, what you want to get out of life. Um, tell me your story, you know? So yeah, it's, uh, fix your gut. We're, we're doing a reboot. We're relaunching it we're bringing it back. Gut health is so important. I mean, it's, it's the cornerstone to your health, you know, <laughs> like you can have elite level athletes that are just being held back. I look at George St. Pierre, if you guys, and, and again, any spoilers of the UFC fight tonight, and I will track you down. Chase will tell you, <laughs> okay, that I will do it. He knows me, um, no spoilers while we're streaming this, but, um, you know, it's like, you got these world-class athletes that have like ulcer of colitis. Like, are you kidding me? And, and it's like they 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 just have they've overlooked something very simple like uh, bouncing their their ammonia or bouncing their oxalates or you know something that just like literally oxalates was this making, week for me it's building yeah, up in my hand oh, yeah. this week <laughs> I gave oh, it gosh, up you know just yeah you, you here's my lemon drink stuff. right now <laughs> oh that's good yeah that's good man yeah awesome uh, you know and just. 
gosh, you know, uh, again, we, we have to, we have to look at that recovery and, and that th those fundamentals are all, all the programming in the world and, and going to do anything. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear from you guys. I, I really have an appreciation from for your audience because they're educated. You know, they, they know about people like Jung and Piaget and, you know, these behavioral psychologists, they, they've, you know, they've absorbed all these pieces that you've given them. So when it comes to, to helping these people, they already have a lot of the foundation there. They just need that next step. They just need that next layer. They just need that next guidance. And it's so much easier and it's so much easier for me and it's cheaper for them because we don't have to spend hours of coaching, you know, working with these people because they already have the foundation laid. We just need to get them going. So it's, it's a win-win for all of us. Uh, so yeah, man, I'm really happy, uh, to be here on the show. I, I hope that your audience, um, yeah, really, they loved it. Uh, they, they loved I, it I hope so. And yeah. I, I hope uh, if there's enough interest in the, and they like me on the show, I hope, you know, maybe, uh, you'll invite me back and we can talk about some other stuff. Cause I'm into other stuff besides fitness too. I love fitness. I think fitness is a very important thing. I'm into other stuff too. And I'd, I'd love just, uh, man, I just love talking to you, Chase, you know, if, <laughs> like if, if I could just get on here and just, and just have like a couple hour conversation, just you and me with nobody else button in or whatever. And we can Dude's just talking. talk and dig into stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. So, uh, Hey, I'd do it even if nobody was watching, <laughs> but anyway, Hey, I appreciate you having me on, man. I hope everybody enjoyed it and I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Yep. Likewise. All right, folks, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's been fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Hooper, for joining us as well. And uh, we, uh, we love you guys, and uh, we're very uh, thankful that you are here uh, as our audience. Um, that being said, you all have a good weekend, and hopefully uh, we have some awesome uh, UFC fights, and hopefully uh, Tampa Bay uh, wins uh, tomorrow. So anyway, folks, that being said, I'll see you all next time.